Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is one of, if not the biggest crossover event in all of gaming. That means that there are quite a few franchises represented in the game, each with several different references in the form of characters, stages, movesets, spirits, music, and more. With so many different things to reference, there are sometimes things that slip through the cracks and are actually inaccurate to their home series. Welcome to the fourth episode of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Inaccuracies and Inconsistencies. In this series, we'd like to take a look at some of the things that are inaccurate to a game's origin or just general errors. As an example to start this episode off, this fence here on the Tundra version of the Minecraft world stage does not connect to its adjacent grass block. In Minecraft, fences will always connect to blocks immediately adjacent to them, so this fence should look like this. So that's an example of an inaccuracy. Shoutouts to Eldian from the comments for pointing that out to me. Also, just like in the previous episode, I won't be mentioning things that were changed for balance purposes or to give characters full movesets, as those are just done to make the character work in Smash. So obviously, Mario's fireballs can't instantly kill piranha plants in Smash like it does in the games, for example. The other type of fact I cover in this series are inconsistencies, things that aren't technically wrong but are just inconsistent to how other things like it work in the game. For an example of one of these, the MC Ballyhoo and Big Top Spirit are said to be from the Mario Party franchise. However, the three spirits from Super Mario Party added in after launch, the Dice Block, River Survival, and Golden Dash Mushroom, are all just classified as being from the Mario series. I can understand the Golden Dash Mushroom being classed like this since it's very iconic for its role in the Mario Kart franchise, but the other two are so obviously just tied to Mario Party. So that would be an example of a weird inconsistency. This series is also just about learning facts, and this is in no way meant to direct any sort of hate to the Smash team. So now that you know what the series is about, let's go ahead and jump into the episode. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like, and since only a small percent of my viewers are subscribed to the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it if you subscribe as well. But now, it's time to begin Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Inaccuracies number 4. A decent amount of today's inaccuracies are taken from the moves menu when you pause the game. Basically, if you hit the pause button and don't immediately rage quit in the middle of the match, you'll be able to see that there's a section for character moves. This covers in depth how every character's special moves work, along with some characters like Kirby getting an extra menu to explain some of their more complicated traits. Originally, I never looked at this menu because I assumed that these would be the exact same as the tips menu, however, they're all actually different, which I thought was pretty strange. I would understand some of the more complicated ones' tips being different, but they actually took the time to write separate tips and move descriptions for whatever reason. This menu was brought to my attention by It's Hack on my Discord with his fact about Dr. Mario's up special, Super Jump Punch. The description states, hits repeatedly with the rising punch, while lacking coins, is extra powerful at the start of the jump. This description was already wrong with its first two words. Unlike Mario's Super Jump Punch, which is a multi-hit, Dr. Mario's only ever hits once, so it makes no sense to say it hits repeatedly. What's weird is that they did get this right in the normal tips menu where it says it won't hit multiple times. See, this is why making multiple different descriptions for the same move confuses me. Just copy the tip over and bam, perfectly good description. As for impossible explanation as to why I think this error might have been made, it could have either been a translation error, or it could have been copied straight over from Mario's description that also says it hits repeatedly, without the knowledge that Dr. Mario's doesn't actually do that. After I tech sent that fact in, I spent a lot of time looking at this menu and found a few more things that aren't exactly 100% correct, so let's go ahead and look at a few of those. The first one of these I myself noticed was with the descriptions of Crom and Roy's counter. Roy says, readies himself and turns aside any attack, sending it back at his foes, with greater force. And Crom's description says, adopts a stance and counterattacks with greater force than the received attack. Both of these say that they attack with greater force. Now some of you may be confused as to why that's technically not always the case, so let me explain. Yes, it's true that these counters will usually multiply the damage they receive by a certain amount when countering it back. For example, Captain Falcon's iconic Falcon Punch will deal about 30% to Crom. However, if Crom counters it back, he'll deal about 40.5%, which means that his counter has about a 1.35 times multiplier when determining how much damage he does back to his opponent. So far so good, the tip is remaining true where they'll be dealing more damage. What I haven't told you yet is that these moves actually have a damage minimum and damage cap. So if they get hit by a really weak move, Krom will still do a minimum of 9.6%, even if this multiplier won't normally let him reach that number. The reverse, however, is also true, so Krom isn't able to deal more than 60% with this counter, meaning that this tip is technically incorrect for any attacks that do more than 60%, as it will actually be weaker than the attacks it's countering. This won't come up very often at all, as there are very few attacks that deal more than 60%, especially without items, but it does come up very rarely regardless. Some examples of attacks that do 60% would be Roy and Krom's fully charged neutral special, Heroes fully charge forward smash with a crit. And yeah, that's about it. <laughs> this situation really is not going to come up very often at all, but it is still technically inaccurate to say that it always deals more damage. Honestly, this one isn't that bad. I just kind of thought it would be fun to talk about countercaps for a little bit.
Okay, so since I do have a few more tips from that menu, I'm going to be taking a break from it for a little bit so that we can talk about a few other things. Since the last episode, two new DLC characters released, Sephiroth and the two-in-one fighters, Pyra and Mithra. So anyways, let's look back at Steve. In the last episode, I talked a little bit about how Steve's mining on some stages didn't really make much sense, but I didn't go over all of them, and since that video, I have found a few more that are a bit weird. Starting off, these platforms on the 3D land stage give Steve dirt when they are clearly made of metal, so they should probably be giving him iron. Next up, Gerudo Valley doesn't use sand as its miscellaneous block, even though it's clearly a sandy area. I mean, let's compare it to Mushroomy Kingdom here, which does give Steve sand. They both look pretty similar, so I'm really not sure what the thought process was for not giving this stage sand, where other stages like normal Mushroom Kingdom give Steve sand. The trees on the Duck Hunt stage give Steve dirt, where they should really be giving him wood since, you know, trees have wood. Now, I thought this was pretty weird, but then I started to look at more trees, and this dirt tree rabbit hole went a lot deeper than I expected. The trees on the back of the turtle on the Great Bay stage give Steve dirt. The trees on Palutena's temple also give Steve dirt. Then I checked the trees on the Golden Plain stage, the ones where wood is clearly visible. Dirt. Now up until this point, I just thought this was some kind of error. I mean, maybe they just selected the whole stage to be dirt and forgot to account for the trees. But then I checked on it, a stage where right underneath its tree is a wood surface due to a house. And yet, it still gave Steve dirt. This one boggles my mind the most. I mean, they even took the attention to detail to make this off-camera dirt patch give Steve dirt instead of the stone like the normal road, which the player can actually see, but they didn't make the clearly visible branch give Steve wood? I just don't get it. Did the Smash team just want trees to be this way? I mean, I guess you're mining the leaves, but surely wood is infinitely closer to what you should be getting than dirt, right? I don't even think I've checked every tree in the game. These are just the ones I tested. I don't know. Let's move on from Steve before I ruin my mind any further. Alright, fine. I'll actually talk about the new DLC characters. No one will ever be better than Steve, though. Except for him. Drive on for Smash. So for Sephiroth, I didn't really find anything. But one cool thing I did want to mention, though, is that I totally predicted that they had add spirit artwork for Cloud in the last episode before Sephiroth was even announced. This may be due to them either being more generous with Dragon Quest, or them finally being a little bit more relaxed in general. So maybe someday they could actually add in some spirit artwork for Cloud. Very proud of myself there. But there was actually something I did want to clear up that I've seen a lot of confusion for, something that actually isn't an inaccuracy. People are saying that the Final Fantasy menu in the music section should not be titled the Final Fantasy VII series since it's only one game, so it wouldn't really make sense to call it a series. The reason it was changed to be called a series and Sephiroth was added, because before it actually wasn't, is because it now uses music from the Advent Children movie, so now it's taking music from different sources so that it can now be considered a series just based around Final Fantasy VII. While we're in the music menu, I also wanted to explain that the reason the Duck Hunt and Ice Climbers music is in the other section, even though Mr. Game Watch gets its own despite all three of them having only two songs, is because Duck Hunt and Ice Climbers only have one game to their name. Game & Watch was a big franchise, which is why they're all separated from the other section. Okay, on to Pyron Mithra, where we do actually have an inaccuracy. I think. So in some of the previous episodes, I mentioned how some characters have costume renders that appear different from how they actually look in the game. Now, I'm not 100% sure on this one because it's very, very close, but on Pyra's fifth alt, you can see that the gem in her sword changes color slightly. This is the only alt between Pyra and Mithra to change their swords in any way from what I can tell. That's why I got pretty suspicious, so I went into a match and it seems that the gem in their sword doesn't actually change at all between the fifth alt and the others. Maybe I'm just blind, but they look exactly the same in-game for me, which is why it's really weird that they decided to change the render. Personally, this comes off to me as a possible error since I really cannot see a difference in the game. So I guess welcome to the club of costumes with inaccurate renders, Pyra. Okay, uh, actually after writing this segment, I did find out that I'm a liar and her 7th ult also changes their sword color on the render. However, this one is much harder to notice. Still though, they appear the same in-game for me, so I guess she might have two that are errors? Again, I'm not 100% sure, but I really cannot see a difference, even though I can see a difference clearly in the renders. Alright, you all remember that move's tips menu I mentioned a few minutes ago? Well, we've got a few more from there, so let's go ahead and knock those out. First off, Mr. Game & Watch's and Pac-Man's neutral specials are both based on food that will damage the opponent. Game & Watch's says, flings inedible food from a frying pan, and Pac-Man says, summons a variety of fruit to throw at his foes. Some of it seems a little less edible, though. This is another technically incorrect case, as while most characters can't eat them, both Kirby and Wario can actually eat these moves to regain health, meaning they're technically edible. Also, all of Pac-Man's items from neutral special are equally edible, on the Smash roster, so that's also, again, technically wrong as well. I wouldn't really call this an error since it's true 98% of the time, but it was still something I thought would be fun to point out. Isabelle's Fishing Rod is another one that's technically wrong, where it says hooks an opponent and throws them forward. Tilting up or down throws the opponent in that direction. For some reason, they don't mention that you can also throw behind Isabelle, only forward, up, and down. No idea why they didn't mention this, especially since the tips menu got this right, but it's still something to mention regardless. 
I also found it interesting that they don't mention that you can reflect things with King Dedede's Inhale on this menu, even though it was a pretty important new addition to his moveset in this game. Maybe this was written before he got this new ability, but I'm not sure. This isn't really something that's wrong, but every other move that reflects something in the game mentions that. Alright, the final one for this menu has to deal with Richter's down special Holy Water. It states throws a bottle of Holy Water diagonally downward. Pillars of Fire erupt from where it lands. This is an exact copy and paste from Simon's description where it is actually correct there. The reason it's not correct for Richter though is because his down special is actually aura based and not fire based. This is pretty much the only difference between Simon and Richter besides a few aesthetic things like taunts. Now some of you may be asking, what's the difference between fire and aura attacks anyway? Well, fire attacks are able to ignite Steve's TNT and Link's bombs along with not being able to damage Red Pikmin. This is all true for Simon's down special, however when Richter uses it, he's not able to ignite the explosives, however this does allow him to actually damage Red Pikmin with his holy water. This aura doesn't scale based on Richter's damage though, like Lucario's aura, which is unfortunate. Also, if you still for some reason don't believe me that this isn't fire, using a spirit that increases fire damage clearly only boosts Simon's down special, not including the bonus attack power you get from just using spirits in general. Obviously this error is present because they just decided to copy Simon's description thinking it would work the exact same, even though it doesn't. Alright, so I know I said the last one was the last one for this menu, but I just found one last thing that was kind of weird. So as I said before, some characters have an extra section under their menu to explain some of their more complicated mechanics. This includes Kirby's Inhale, Wario's Bike, Olimar's Pikmin, Lucario's Aura, Villager's Timber, Cringe's Luma, Little Mech's KO Punch, Pac-Man's Bonus Fruit, Robin's Levin Sword and Tomes, Shulk's Monado Arts, Ryu and Ken's Command Inputs and Strength Inputs, Cloud's Limit, Inkling's Ink, Joker's Arsene, Hero's MP and Command Selection, Terry's Command Inputs and Go Meter, Min Min's Arm, Steve's Neutral Special, Sephiroth's Winged Form, and Mithra's Foresight. The reason I wanted to go through all of those was to show you why this final one sticks out so much. For whatever reason, they decided to give Pyro's Forward Smash its own section of this menu despite it being a super basic and clear cut move. I mean, sure it's strong, but it's not special compared to other things in this menu to warrant another page. I just thought that would be something interesting and kind of inconsistent to show. I'm not really sure why they felt the need to give Pyra's Forward Smash its own menu. Maybe they just wanted to give Pyra another section just like Mithra got, but I'm not sure. Moving on from that menu, we have stuff from another menu, the voices. This menu is supposed to contain all the voice lines for each character in the game. While it definitely does a decent job, there are a few things that are missing in this menu. First off, most of the characters make a noise after being star KO'd, which is basically when you knock them out of the top blast zone and they go flying into the background. Mario's, for example, sounds like this. <laughs> These are usually pretty obvious to hear by their more echoey sound than the other voices in the menu. I never learned how to read! Of all the characters here, however, only one does not have their star KO voice in this menu. That character is Ken. Yeah, for whatever reason, they didn't put Ken's Star KO voice into the voice menu, despite it clearly using his voice. Take a listen. They do still have Ryu's Star KO line in this menu, so I guess they just forgot to put Ken's here for some reason. Thanks to Dylan Lee from the comments for pointing this out. Samus and Dark Samus also make noises while being Star KO'd that also don't appear in this menu. This however is clearly because they aren't using their voices though and are just sound effects so they make sense not to be here, unlike Ken. Another weird voice fact is that Jigglypuff snoring after using rest is not considered to be a voice sound effect. If we turn off the music and voices in the sound menu, Jigglypuff snoring will still make noise. I guess they just forgot to tie this sound effect to being a character's voice, which is definitely a funny mistake to make. Once again, it's Hack on my Discord pointing this out to me, so thank you again to him. I genuinely have no idea how he found this. Alright, speaking of the comments, let's run through a few more miscellaneous ones from there. Mike McGamer talks about how Pichu's up taunt has him use electricity to the point of overworking himself. If you've played Pichu at all in Smash, you know that his gimmick is whenever he uses an electric type attack, he will damage himself due to his poor control over it. Despite that, this taunt doesn't damage him, even though it literally shows him overworking himself. Other taunts like Luigi and Greninja's down taunts can damage other players, so I don't really see a reason why Pichu's wouldn't be able to damage himself, even if it's not a full percent's worth of damage. A person comments about Ness and Lucas's moves not being theirs. While this was probably done just to give them a move set in Smash, the last thing that they mentioned could definitely be considered inaccurate, where they say PK Flash works differently than it does in the other titles. Basically, it normally gives whoever it hits a random effect, whereas in Smash, it only does a strong hitting blast. I think for the next Smash game, they can make it work like Sephiroth's Final Smash, where it could do a random effect every time to more closely fit with the original game. Actual Asian comments that Villager catches a Horn Dynastid off of the ground in one of his victory screens. 
In the Animal Crossing titles, this particular bug and many others like it can only be found on trees. So the fact that it was caught off the ground here is incorrect. They could have used a different ground-based bug like a grasshopper or something else to make it more close to the original game's actual mechanics, but they probably just wanted to use this bug because it looked the best. Or maybe they just randomly picked it. The final comment fact for this episode comes from GTSH Productions, where they say that the Koopalink's alternate costume order is incorrect. The order is supposed to be based on the order you fight the Koopalings in Super Mario Bros. 3, which goes Larry, Morton, Wendy, Iggy, Roy, Lemmy, then Ludwig. In Smash Ultimate, though, they for some reason swapped Roy and Morton, so the order actually has these two mixed up. I'm guessing this was a mistake since Roy and Morton have very similar builds to each other. I can't imagine there being any other reason that they would be in this order, so I think that there's a high probability that this was a mistake. Now I've been playing a lot of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe lately, so the Mario Circuit stage definitely caught my attention as it has a decent amount of inaccuracies. First off, none of the enemies from the original track appear on the stage. In the original game, the first turn and last stretch have several Goombas, and there are also pipes with piranha plants in them later on down the road. These Goombas do not appear at all on the track, however the piranha plants are much more interesting. The pipes with them at the end of the track still exist, just no piranha plants can come out of them, but the first set of pipes however are completely missing. I find it really strange that they would keep one set while completely removing the other. I imagine there are no enemies on the Smash version in order to make it look and play better, but the pipes thing is definitely a strange decision. The ending also does not have a glider ramp that it normally does, and the ending portion is instead just a blank road. This may have been done just to make sure that all the Shy Guys are on the ground for this one section that you need to dodge them, but I think it would have been really neat to try to avoid them from the air as well. The final main change they made to this track was placing this set of tires right here. There are no tires here on the original track, but the reason they did this was probably to give the fighters another place to land on the stage. Personally, I think they probably could have thought of somewhere else, but this section is still nice to have. So yeah, the Mario Circuit course is a mixed bag of removing and adding details, which I think is kind of funny. Also, mini rant here, I see a lot of people say that Mario Kart Stadium should have been the track included for Mario Kart 8 instead of Mario Circuit for Smash Bros, but I completely disagree. Mario Circuit does a way better job of showing off what Mario Kart 8 is about, the anti-gravity. Plus, this track's shape being a Mobius strip is also what the 8 and the logo is based on, so yeah, this track fits way more. Also, Mario Circuit is a way better track in my opinion. To end off this video, we have a few more miscellaneous ones that I felt like didn't really fit in any of my sections. Onto the training mode, if you refresh the stage and then immediately try to place a block with Steve, it won't let you. Not only that, but the warning sign doesn't appear where the block would be placed, like it normally does if nothing can be placed down, but it appears in the very center of the stage, sometimes even clipping into the ground. I imagine training mode has some sort of timer to prevent Steve from placing blocks for a short amount of time, like how he can't place blocks for a bit after dropping from a ledge. However, the warning sign appearing in the center of the stage is pretty strange. The picture that appears in the center of your screen when hovering over the online menu has Sonic running towards a bunch of characters' default renders. Interestingly enough though, Rob is shown here with his Japanese render instead of his American one. If you didn't know, depending on which version of the game you have, Rob's default appearance will change in order to match that region's Rob design. I guess for the online section, they just forgot to change it back to the gray American one, so it's seen here with its red and white design. For the final and most intimidating fact of this video, if you play on the Golden Plain stage and stand far enough away from the screen, you are able to turn the camera and see that Steve is able to stand on coins. Spooky. But anyways, that's it for Smash Inaccuracies 4. Are you all incredibly mad at Nintendo for mixing up Roy and Morton? Let me know in the comments. There were a lot of facts that I had to cut from this episode as I talked for a really long time about some of these. This is one of my favorite series to make, so I'm really happy that you all have been enjoying it so far. Anyways, one last note, my previous video about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe vs 3D World plus Bowser's Fury to see which was the best Wii U port is my worst performing video in months. I really liked how it turned out, so if you have the time, I'd appreciate it if you check that one out as well. If you enjoyed this video though, please make sure to leave a like so that this video doesn't have the same fate, and also subscribe to the channel so you know when I'll upload next. Links to my Twitter and Discord server are in the description. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.